Welcome to the DinoGo channel. In this tutorial video, I'll be sharing the process of designing a professional logo, from sketch to a complete logo. Especially because this is a rather long video, during the tutorial, I might share four additional useful tips in Illustrator that you might have missed, particularly the last tip. If you have any unclear points, don't hesitate to leave a comment below the video, and I'll try to respond as soon as possible. Let's get started. Here, I have a wolf logo sketch. First, we'll draw four circles with sizes of 20, 30, 50, and 80 pixels. To understand why I'm using these proportions, you can watch the previous video. When designing a complex logo, I usually create a structure with fixed ratios and then develop the rest of the logo similar to drawing a tree. Before drawing leaves, you need to have the trunk. And the structure of this logo is the combination of the three circles you see. Next, based on the structure and the sketch, I'll complete the other details of the wolf. Of course, you need to ensure harmony, visual balance, and not overload the logo with too many details. Here, I'll use the pen tool to quickly draw the lines. Then, I'll adjust them along any circle to make the logo look more professional and harmonious. As usual, I'll save a version for future editing purposes. Next is cleaning up the lines to reduce the number of unnecessary anchor points. Here's a small tip that most beginners in design may not know. You can join two or more paths together by selecting all and pressing Ctrl plus J.
After handling that, we'll start creating shapes for the logo using the Live Paint Bucket tool. I want to create a logo on a colored background, so I'll use white and light blue to make the logo stand out. In logo design or any complex design that requires many color details, you should create global colors before starting. We have tip number two, a guide to creating global colors. I'll select all colors in the color panel. Choose new color group. Here you have to check convert process to global. Now, every time I create a color gradient, I'll only select global colors. You'll understand the effect of this when you watch towards the end of the video. In the ear part of the wolf, I want to add a darker gradient. Many of you may still believe that each shape can only have a maximum of one gradient. But that's not the case. Here I have tip number three, which is to add a second gradient effect. Select the shape you want to add the gradient to, go to appearance, choose the gradient effect, and click on the plus sign. This way, you've just added another gradient effect on top, which you can edit independently without affecting the first gradient. I'll start adding light and dark color shades to create dimension for the logo.
Here, I feel the colors are not quite right, so I'll adjust the colors a bit. As you can see, when I adjust the global color parameters, all the logo colors have changed accordingly. At this point, surely I don't need to explain, you already understand how to use global colors, right? The final step is to add text to the logo. At this stage, I have a tip that few people know when aligning text in Illustrator. Usually, there will always be a space behind the text like this, leading to inaccurate positioning. To align correctly, you need to convert text to shape without knowing that you can solve this problem by aligning to glyph bounds according to point text. What about paragraphs? You do the same but select area text. So, we have completed the design of a professional wolf logo from the sketch to the complete logo. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel so I have more motivation to create more videos in the future.